From time bandits to time baby, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Nathan Yaffe. Happy to be here. Haley Mancini. Covered in cat fur and ready to go. <laughs> and Kirk D'Amato. Catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> game is very simple. Uh, I have here a stack of statements. These are false, untrue statements about the things that you like. Uh, it's up to you to find what is wrong with it and correct me by buzzing in. Only two rules are you must proceed your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, I won't give you a point. Uh, and you can interrupt me at any point when I'm reading the question. You don't need to wait for the question to finish, just like in real life. <laughs> um, that uh, That's pretty much it. How, how, how are you guys feeling? It looks like there's a little bit of nerves. There's some, there's some tension on the bench a bit. To quote Star Wars, I've got a good feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> um, actually. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started then, so um, make yourself comfortable, grab your buzzers, and we'll jump right in to this first question. In the movie Son of Godzilla, a group of scientists find an enormous egg from which a creature named Godzilla Jr. hatches. Godzilla oh, Jr., uh, yes? Uh, um, actually, Godzuki? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's not, not Godzuki. Oh. Oh. Well, oh. we don't know what the question is. Uh, I'll, I'll start again from the beginning. In the movie Son of Godzilla, a group of scientists find an enormous egg from which a creature named Godzilla Jr. hatches. Godzilla Jr. would later appear in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and Godzilla vs. Destoroya. Nathan. Uh, um, actually, it wasn't scientists, it was tourists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a very funny idea for, uh, for, a, for a, like a kaiju movie. A group of unsuspecting tourists like stumble on a thing, but that, that is incorrect. Yeah. Um, actually, yes. he was not born of an egg. His mother gave birth to him, and it was beautiful. <laughs> was like, Mothra was Godzilla, the doula. They got a big old camcorder, yeah. Godzilla's there. Yeah. Like, okay, record Godzilla. this moment. So it's not Godzuki, You're huh? on the right track, I will say that. Like, you're, you're on the right track, but you don't, you don't, your specifics are wrong. Oh, crud. Well, that's typical for yeah. me. That sounds, oh, that sounds about right. My specifics are wrong. Yeah, no, no points for that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. we'll We're there. off to a rousing start. There was no childbirth scene. You know yeah, what? The, I, I dreamt that. These questions are intentionally very difficult. Um, actually, the creature that hatches uh, in Son of Godzilla is Manila or Minya. Oh, oh, I knew it. Yeah. I wanted to say the word Minya. Uh, there's a different Son of Godzilla that is Godzilla Junior. Gotcha. That's right. He's real goofy. He's yeah. real. There's very. He's very goofy. He blows smoke circles. And he hangs out with this one kid, and like they, they like learn stuff. To, it was when like Godzilla went through its friend, like we gotta be kid friendly phase. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like there's like a couple movies in there that's just like kind of wacky. Yeah. But that's fine because that's when like Rodan came up, and Rodan. Well, I mean Rodan was around for a while, but he went through a phase where he became like Godzilla's frenemy, and it's like my Rodan favorite the thing ever. Sculptor. Um, yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> Listen, wow. he uses his wings. We're, and his we're writing an amazing movie. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> a group of tourists yeah. find an egg and Rodan the sculptor pops out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pan call us. Well, uh, no point for that one, but that's okay. <laughs> and we had a good time anyway. <laughs> On to our next question, which is about The Simpsons. Ooh. The Simpsons. <laughs> In The Simpsons episode, Two Dozen and One Greyhounds, Mr. Burns ends up convinced by Bart and Lisa to spare the lives of the 25 puppies spawned from their dog, Santa's little helper, and his mate, She's the Fastest. Unable to home the 25 dogs, Marge makes the kids distribute the puppies to random townsfolk, including Snake, Groundskeeper Willie, and Krusty. Um, actually, there were not 25. Uh, there, were, there were 25 Greyhounds. Oh, puppies. damn. Um, actually, not Groundskeeper Willie, but uh, Chief Wiggum. Um, we need one for the, <laughs> for the <laughs> police department. Classic quote. Uh, yeah. No, no that's, that's not that's what how we're Paw going Patrol for. Started. In, 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 an, in an odd phrasing of this question, you are kind of technically. You're maybe technically right, but not, not oh. you're not correcting the right thing here. There's something that, oh, that is I much, see. much okay. bigger, Because yeah. I'm pretty sure Chief Wigan does take one, but yeah, yeah. okay. You gotta read it again. Yes, I will read it. It was a very long question. In The Simpsons episode Two Dozen and One Greyhounds, Mr. Burns ends up convinced. I just want, um, I know I got it wrong. It's called Two Dozen and One Greyhounds, and that's, I was like, that's 21. But and then you said I was wondering, but yeah. I was like. So you can take a point away from yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just bad math. Because my math. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Um, um, actually, they don't convince Mr. Burns to spare the puppies. They 
they do some sort of caper to escape them instead? Uh, oh, oh, you, you know what? I will, you've identified what is wrong. You, your specific is right. So I'll give you the point unless uh, Kirk or, or Haley can, can uh, yeah, Kirk. Um, actually, yeah. the dogs do an amusing trick. Um, the, um, they, they they do do that's but that's yeah, Haley Haley you're you're you're, 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 you're lit <laughs> up here. Um, actually, Mr. Burns takes favor to one puppy, mm -hmm. and he and he's like because it it jumps up and begs, and he's like, oh, I'll I'm going to keep this one, and he names it uh, something ridiculous, and then Bart and Lisa uh, use a clothesline to, to pull a sock over the rest of the dogs, <laughs> and the dogs all jump up and beg, and he goes, now I can't tell the difference between any of them, so I'll kill them all but then they get them out. And um, actually, <laughs> the name was the person who's always walking around, that famous person who's always walking around, Rory Calhoun. Rory Calhoun, <laughs> yes. Ah. <laughs> This is incredible in that we've, we've danced around we've, the right we've, answer. We've, <laughs> we've described so much of this episode. Uh, I, so I, I think, okay, where's what I'm gonna, I am gonna give the point to Nathan who has identified the main thing that's wrong. They don't distribute the dogs at the end of this episode. Uh, what I was hoping for, if someone could get more correct than Nathan, which is that Mr. Burns keeps all the dogs and he, oh, he and, and um, actually, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Ailey, go ahead. And then they all become winners in the greyhound racing yes. because of their superior genetics, and somehow he wins again. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that is That's what it. actually happens. Unfortunately, it's too late to claim the point for that. Well, the, the scene that we're all thinking of when they distribute the dogs is from a later episode where um, uh, Santa's little helper and Dr. Hibbert's dog Rosa Barks oh, have, have right. a litter, and they distribute those puppies. Uh, so totally understand. Very tricky of us to uh, to. Confuse two dog distribution scenes. And that's yeah, the one uh, where Chief Wiegum yes. uh, says, "Oh, we could use oh, a, the famous uh, line." And there <laughs> were there, there were not twenty five puppies for that one. We've described a whole lot of that episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, we didn't get that that specific detail right. for either of you to claim it. So I'm going to give that one that's, to Nathan that's for getting fair. it. That's, and that that's fair. That's fair. Personally ashamed at myself you, every you every got time. There. I you just these, need yeah. that little bit, that little <laughs> yeah. boost at the end. <laughs> there we go. Just if you that. just keep describing the episode, eventually you'll get <laughs> yeah. to we'll, we'll the rewrite part. the whole yeah. thing. Exactly. <laughs> Infinite monkeys here typing away, oh my God. which is also a scene the, in yes. Mr. Burns' yes. mansion in The Simpsons. Best so. of times, it the was blur? the blur. Sometimes, <laughs> you stupid <laughs> monkey. Yeah. This is everything I want from this show. Right. It's just just right. endless quotes. In Westeros, Valerian steel swords are particularly prized. They are exceptionally sharp, never need honing, and the technique to make Valerian steel was lost when doom befell Valeria. Jon Snow acquires the Valerian steel sword Ice when he is gifted it by Jaor Mormont. Uh, um, actually, Ice is uh, Ned Stark's sword. That's that, correct. Yeah. Whoa. That's correct. Ice is Ned Stark's sword. Jon Snow doesn't have uh, that sword. Jon Snow's sword is. Do you know? You, I'm going to give you the point no matter what. But uh, but I'm just curious if you can if you could pull it pull a name out out oh. from thin air. Mr. Putter? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a Simpsons joke. Oh, no. God damn it. Actually, his sword's name is Rory Calhoun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His sword is always can walking. Stand yeah. 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 He begged for him. And then... <laughs> we'll give you the point, Nathan. Yeah, Ice is Ned Stark's sword, that which later melted, melted down, down and turned into two different swords. Jon Snow's sword is Longclaw, which he oh, does get right, yeah. from J.R. Mormont. Also, they address this in the show, but like, don't name a weapon. Don't name your sword. That's like, that. Like if you met someone and they're like, let me show you my gun. I call it, you know, like, I'll call it the boom maker. It's like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. I thought you were going towards like, guys naming their swords in general, like sword guys. Cause I'm like, every oh. girl's dated a sword guy, but like didn't know. And then you're like, I, you're like, I thought this guy was okay. Then I came home and he's like, got two swords on the wall, no headboard, and he has a snake. <laughs> like, ah, well. I feel bad because I feel like you're describing a specific person. Yeah. No, man, this is truly an archetype that has arisen in our time. You've dated several is... snake and sword guys in your time. <laughs> All I'm saying you got a type. <laughs> um, well, uh, that's a point for Nathan. Uh, I wanted yeah. to get at least one point, and I did it. So now <laughs> yeah. I can just... Relax. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, this next one is about uh, Tailspin, the animated show oh. Tailspin. Wow. <laughs> Tailspin in some ways seems to be a spin-off of the Jungle Book and that it also features the character of Baloo. But this version of Baloo wears clothes, flies a plane, and is the only character from the Jungle Book to appear in the series. Yes, Kurt. <laughs> um, actually, <laughs> come on, we have Louie, uh, King Louie, mm -hmm. but he's no longer a king and he wears a Hawaiian shirt. And let's not forget Shere Khan, why did I? I'm so indignant about that. <laughs> that question is so my up my alley. Yeah, it's so funny. 
<laughs> that, I actually didn't have Louie on here, but I did. Uh, Sheer Khan was what I was going for. Um, is, is King Louie also in, in the show? Yes, he must be. Amazing. Yes. No, I'm How are you going to have you a know, show Actually, about... now that you say Hawaiian shirt, that, that image is like... Uh, like yeah, once totally... you said that, I was actually They're like, all wearing uh, Hawaiian shirts. Right? <laughs> yeah, Blue, yeah, wear, like... Blue wears khaki. Okay. Yeah, Sheer Khan's like an like, evil yeah, criminal like banker. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a suit. Mm -hmm. He yeah. went from hating humans to really embracing the human way of doing things. Yeah. Apparently it was something like they wanted something that felt like a mix of like Casablanca and Cheers uh, as this sort of like, it's like we want this sort of like, it to be like this sort of like, like mid slash post war. There's so like the impl implication yeah. is that there is like this giant world war that's going on like outside like this little harbor that's very safe. And uh, and then they and we want this kind of like, you know, so we want this sort of like Sam and Diane thing going on between Baloo and, and his boss. <laughs> it feels like fan fiction, right? It's yeah. just like we took these characters from this thing and we're like, what if it's an alternate universe where animals fly planes? And yeah. That's so silly. It's a very silly, it. very silly it. show. Kids loved Casablanca. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's and right. cheer. Right, well, with that, we will move on to our next question. Mm. And this brings us to our very first shiny question of the game. Now, shiny questions, just like shiny Pokemon. So they're worth the same number of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. Uh, now this is a game called Fictionary. In just a second, I'm gonna give you the name of a monster from folklore, uh, from, from some kind of folklore, uh, uh, and I'm not gonna give you anything other than the name. And it'll be up to you to draw, to the best of your ability, this monster. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna be looking for like, an, like, a, like the best drawing here, um, but I'll be looking for a few key features that are sort of like definitional to the creature. Uh, great, so your monster is a kappa. Kappa. Kirk with a gasp and a uh, quick pen. I have He's... a photograph of one on my phone. Very oh. strange, a very strange thing. Boy, what artistic <laughs> point of view do I want to take for this? Yeah, what, what school, what tradition of art are we are we looking for here? I'll say there's there's specifically three things that I'll be looking for here in your drawing of the Kappa. I'll give you guys a hint. He's Japanese. <laughs> That's a freebie from Kirk. You get one. You get one. Maybe two. Kirk is capping his pen. Capping for the kappa. Capping for the kappa. Nathan is capping his pen. Okay. And Haley is ready. All right. Well, you were tasked with uh, drawing the most accurate representation you could of a kappa. Let's see what you got. Uh, Nathan, show us your kappa. That's really good. It's Thank really, you. really good. You, you bastard, man. <laughs> you gave me a drawing challenge. <laughs> uh, all right, Nathan, tell us about your kappa. Um, okay, so I, I'm pretty sure they're like the root of Koopa from, mm. from Mario. Mm. And uh, I remember it also, there was a college humor video about like the other different Greek letter type of males and the kappa male was, because Caldwell made it. And yeah. so. Uh, I tried my best to remember. They've got like a, a thingy on their head and they're turtle-like. You've got the things that I'm looking for, uh, the, the the divot in the head, the turtle shell, uh, a little beak. So those are the main things. The Mario, Mario is just for wasn't fun. necessary, but always great to see Mario pop, pop in uh, when he's around. Um, that's, that's for you, a, nerds. That's a pretty accurate uh, representation of a kappa. Uh, Haley, let's see what you got. <laughs> oh, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> but hold on, let's see what I've got. Well. <gasps> <laughs> oh. I think we all know what a kappa you bar looks like. <laughs> and obviously, I got this right because there's he's got a bird on him because mm -hmm. birds ride him. <laughs> and he wears a little hat. <laughs> Just like a cap I would borrow would. Like a, like you know, a little you're looking for three distinct things. I'm sure in some schools of thought, the kappa maybe is featured uh, wearing a, a jaunty hat and a tiny bird. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah no, sure. re no reason it can't be. Um, I will say, I think we're missing at least a couple of those features I was looking for. <laughs> uh, Which ones? And so while, while it is a Where? beautiful drawing of a kappa Ibarra, uh, I don't think I can award you a point for this one, but I do love the drawing very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be making a copy and sending it to my mom <laughs> for the fridge. <laughs> uh, Kirk, uh, what do you have here? Uh, well, this is a historically accurate kappa. Oh, no Mario's here. No Mario's here. <laughs> Although that was a fun 
bit of trivia, let's talk about the truth of a kappa. <laughs> uh, you can find them in Tokyo, uh, in, uh, especially in the area of Kapabashi, mm -hmm. the Kappa's oh. Bridge, where there's a statue of a golden one. This is true, and also a temple with a shrine to them where you can leave their favorite food, a cucumber, which is also known as a kappa in Japanese. But let's not end there. <laughs> By all means, no. So that was a fun fact that was not one of the things you're looking for. Sure. But yes, they're very turtle-like. Yeah. I chose to draw a friendlier one. Sure. Uh, and then they do have the, the divot or the bowl in their head that contains water. If you can trick them into spilling the water from their head, they become powerless. Or you can feed them cucumbers so they don't drown you in their water. But yeah, they're basically turtle-like and they got the bowl, got the cucumbers. They're really good. I've donated some cucumbers to the shrine there last November, shared them with Zardulu the Mythmaker. <laughs> I, I am a Zardulist. And who is a real person? That's a whole other story. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I have a very fond uh, fond memories of this fellow. Can That's you imagine cool. if I didn't give you a point for this? <laughs> <laughs> well, his drawing is you better. You left out the Mario. Yeah. That's pretty good. We, we've got a picture um, uh, of a kappa here, just so that we have something to compare against. Um, oh, and wow. yeah, you've, uh, oh, cool. we got we got some some pretty good. I, I would say that that's a that's a point for both. Ugh, that looks like another Kirk. sword guy I've dated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hey, something out okay? of Dark Crystal. <laughs> some, like, some of the guys you've been. I'm a little worried about you. Where am I? <laughs> Now, some of you noticed some things that we got wrong in our last episode. These are our favorite corrections from you, our pickiest viewers. At Duncan2430834 says, Um, actually, the Hufflepuff common room doesn't open with a password. It's a stack of barrels that will only open the door if they are tapped in the right order. If they don't, one of them explodes and covers the person in vinegar. That still kinda sounds like a password to me, but I'll give you the point anyway. From our dropout Discord, Lycan Liam says, Um, actually, there is a kryptonite that permanently removes Superman's powers. Gold kryptonite. Debuting in Adventure Comics number 299, it is kryptonite affected by atomic radiation, capable of permanently removing a Kryptonian's ability to process yellow sunlight, which nullifies all superhuman abilities. Corrections, of course, are my kryptonite. That is one point for Lycan Liam. User V. Povio says, Um, actually, Ursa isn't a wizard. He's an artificer, which is a separate and distinct creature subtype from wizard. V. Povio goes on to preemptively rebut any argument I might have that Urza might be a wizard, stacking the deck against me. So one point for you. For your uh, accurate uh, Kappa drawings, uh, that is a point for both Nathan and for Kirk. Uh, so tie, tie point there, one point for each of you. Crossovers, you gotta love them. Take two things you like and put them in one place. But while some crossovers make perfect sense, like Jetsons meet the Flintstones, others are a little stranger, like the Punisher's appearance in Archie Comics, the My Little Pony Spawn crossover, or the Attack on Titan Avengers crossover. Nathan. Um, actually, the Flintstones meet the Jetsons makes no sense. It makes some <laughs> sense. They're both Hanna-Barbera <laughs> cartoons. They're, uh, they're basic. They're all like they're nuclear families in a specific thing. I appreciate the, the, uh, the editorializing, but I'll say it makes too much sense. Okay. Um, actually, yes. I'll say the Punisher in Archie comics is is not a cross. Didn't happen. That actually did what? happen. There is a Punisher. Punisher makes an appearance Should've in Archie comics. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Kirk. Um, actually, by process of elimination, <laughs> and I did know that when I was like, wow. The Punisher's going after Archie Andrews, finally. <laughs> finally. Because of all the pain and suffering yeah. he's caused Betty and Veronica, and like the way he takes advantage of his teachers. Poor Miss Grundy. Poor Principal <laughs> Webby. What a, what, a, oh, what a bad student. Truly he deserves to die. <laughs> the only solution <laughs> is death. Um, no, uh, actually, um, it would be uh, My Little Pony and Spawn have never crossed over. Yes, there is no My Little Pony Spawn crossover. You know why I yes. didn't chime in on that? Yeah, yeah. that's because I yes. was like, fan. the fan fiction of My Little Pony is so extensive that I was like, I guess I factored that in. Yeah, I am not including, you know, fan fiction or uh, anything here. Actually, like, I, I'm yeah. trying to include like that canonical. In my head. That's the thing. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's on, you know because, what? Because, yeah, this I'm sure, I bet if we Googled right now, we could probably oh, find a, a, like, yeah. a, a pony that's just yes. full, like, Spawn. A spawn, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. As cool as that would be, uh, it's not the case. Pro crossover, anti crossover. Where do you guys? Uh, how do you guys feel about crossovers? The Jetsons are from the future, and the Flintstones are from the past. <laughs> um, actually, time is a circle. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> I feel it does have like there was a time machine, obviously, that mm -hmm. goes from one end to the other, and then there was there used to be a ride at Universal Studios mm. that was the Hanna Barbera ride, where you'd meet them, Scooby Doo, and the Jetsons, and you oh, kind of like ride around. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was it was a ride. 
It was, it was a ride. You it was... rode it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Real fast. I have, I have to share the funniest moment I've ever seen in my life that happened at Universal Studios on the Jurassic Park ride. I was on it last Halloween, and we, uh, we were going through the part where there's this like the Dilophosauruses start shooting. You know, they shoot streams of water over your raft as you go through it. So it's supposed to kind of crisscross and get you as the raft goes through. But something happened up ahead, and our raft stopped and there was a guy ahead of us in the row and to the side that was clearly on a date and he got stuck as the Dilophosaurus was shooting right at him <laughs> and you could see that he had this moment where he's like should I duck and he's like no that's gonna get hurt so he had to just like sit there and take it to the dome <laughs> and that was like how long was he stuck getting sprayed I mean with... it was like a while like he was very <laughs> wet afterwards I, I kind of like the chivalry of it it was just like yeah. spray <laughs> me Dilophosaurus oh. I'm like, I'll take the acid to the face the best is just the raft starts and then stops again <laughs> It's like, nope, it's back. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, gang, today's episode of Um Actually is brought to you by HelloFresh, a meal kit service that helps you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients for mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store to make cooking fun, easy, and affordable. It's a new year. It's time to try something new. HelloFresh offers over 23 weekly recipes from a wide range of cuisine. And look, if your new year is already off to a busy start, then HelloFresh's Easy Eats options are perfect for you. From oven-ready to 10 to 20 minute meals, these are quick and easy meal solutions that take all the stress out of home cooking. I actually love cooking, but this past year has been a little bit of a chore. So HelloFresh made it easy to shake up my menu and also take some of the work out of measuring out every little ingredient. Because sometimes you don't want to buy a whole giant thing of oregano if you just need a little teaspoon, right? <sighs> Go to HelloFresh.com slash actually10 and use the code actually10 to get 10 free meals, including shipping. That's free food, people. HelloFresh.com slash actually10. Use the code actually10. Start the year off right. Get the free food that you deserve. Don't forget, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit service for a reason. All right, this is about Xena, Warrior Princess. While most of Xena's talents and skills are of this world, she has displayed some supernatural and otherworldly talents. In addition to mastery of her signature weapon, the fictional Chakram, she has also used telekinesis and energy projection. Um, um actually, the Chakram is a real, is a real weapon. That's correct. The Chakram is a real weapon. It's a, it's a weapon of Indian origin. Oh. Um, Xena just totally made that her own. Uh, 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 really, really took it around with it. But yeah, that's a real thing. A deadly, curved, ringed frisbee. What, were the, what were the powers? Those, those are all powers so she that she does have. Oh yeah, I it. guess that is the other half. That, like late season, uh, there are there is at least one episode where she um, uh, she uses telekinesis and also energy projection. Wait, you mean to tell me she didn't use that in the first several seasons? <laughs> you, mean, you mean to tell me they may have put that in as a stunt to carry yeah. them through some later You mean like seasons? they started to run out of ideas yeah. and were just like, we gotta beef this up Ta-da. a little bit. Um, cool, that is a point for Nathan. In Monty Python and the Holy Grail, a narrator reading the book of the film informs us of the four other knights that join Arthur on his quest. Sir Bedivere the Wise, Sir Lancelot the Brave, Sir Galahad the Pure, and Sir Robin the not quite so brave as Sir Lancelot. Nathan. Um, actually, Sir Bedivere the Wise joins King Arthur before that point, and uh, so he's not listed by the narrator. Uh, he does join before that point, but he is included in the list, yeah. Uh, I don't believe it is a book of the film. It is. Oh, well, I'm um, actually, but doesn't matter. I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, we're all friends here. No, it, it is a book of the film. I it specifically included that so to be very clear. Like this is the portion we're talking about. There are there are knights that are mentioned in this section in reading the book of the film. Yeah. Um, actually, King Arthur's reading the book. Uh, no. What a twist! No, 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 no. <laughs> it was me all along, <laughs> Graham exactly. Chapman. That's the big, that's the big reveal. No, I just want to get to the answer. What is it? Okay, yeah. Uh, it sounds like this. This may have something. That's fine. Uh, there is another knight that was listed in that section oh, of the book that's... of the film. Oh, because uh, I was like, those not guys. not appearing in this film. So not yeah. appearing in this film uh, is also listed in the book of the film as a knight who accompanies uh, King Arthur, even though he does not appear in the film. <sighs> Very aptly named. 
Sir not a well, that is spell. tricky. It is very tricky. Because you can't, like, you, you can't all remember the other names, that he's there. You're like, I know those guys right. were there, and it was that. You should, yeah. Whoever wrote that question should get a point. Yeah. That's, oh, that's thank you. Good, I'll take one good, point for me, yeah. please. <laughs> good. That's... Hey, can I have your point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this brings us to our second shiny question of the game. Okay. Uh, this is a game called Find the Fake. So on this sheet, there are uh, six things of, in a group. One of those things is fake. The first person to identify the fake that does not belong, ring in and tell me which one doesn't belong, will get the point for this shiny question. Does that make sense? Everyone, everyone cool with that? Cool, go ahead and flip those over. These, these are Pokemon, but one of them doesn't belong, Nathan. Uh, it's the it's the lamp with the boxing gloves. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> it is the lamp with the boxing gloves. Kangaskhan, uh, but he's got a lampy thing on him. It, uh, uh, it is, that is not. Um, actually, it's the lamp with the boxing gloves. Yeah. You did not say, well, actually, I allow that for the shiny for questions. Because they're, 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 the format's all diff different and weird. But yes, the rest of these are all real Pokemon. That one, we just commissioned an artist. I asked him to please draw a kangaroo with a lamp for a head. Uh, and he gave us this lovely, uh, not real Pokemon, I don't know what you would call him, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 jump or jump, lamp or jump. Well, he looks Genghis like he's Khan. He, or Genghis Khan's Khan. Khan, what is that? He's the one that's yeah. like, hey, he said, I should get a point it's, for that. I know this is it's pretty much what he's based <laughs> yeah. on. I know it my Pokemon. Is, this is not Kangas Khan. This has no, a no, lamp. No, no, no. I said it. with it because Kangas Khan is basically <laughs> oh, like it, that, but with the lampshade on. Because it does have a little see, baby see? with the lamp on its it head. It does a little baby with a lamp on its head. That's it, great. Kangas Khan got very drunk yeah. Yeah. In, in a cartoon yes. way, and both both baby and Kangas Khan. Um, actually, I have a Kangas Khan in my Pokemon Go because I asked I I asked a friend who's flying to Australia catch me one, and I signed off. And Are gave they it only in Australia? The King's they were, Pokemon and Go. They started moving around, but I was very competitive at the time the Pokemon came out. And I, a friend was flying to Australia, and I, lo I logged off for 12 <laughs> hours so that it accommodated the flight. And then he logged on, and I was like, I will send you money <laughs> if you Dang. go catch me, take some, take, take some of your time from your Australian vacation and catch me that Pokemon. <laughs> 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 they did it. Can I, can I ask how much you paid for a Kangaskhan? Uh, I think I, I think I sent him 50. Wow. wow. I 100% so... cheated at Pokemon Go. <laughs> we were talking about how we run out of ideas in later seasons. Oh, do you think that maybe some of these- I don't know. We got, okay, sure, that's a Pokemon. Yeah, this guy with the pants, mm -hmm. key ring. Yep. yep. Ah, yes, the key ring. Klefki. Klefki. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but like, don't I, come at me with that shit. I, I feel like, yeah, we're about like 20 years into this <laughs> franchise. Well, we got, I don't, I got, hey, marker man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, tr but, it truly is, you can see in, in Pokemon, like you can spot the exact moments where it's like, you, there was a late night, mm -hmm. and you uh -huh. just you had to cut. It's like it's a it's a soft serve ice cream, it's and then it evolves <laughs> into two soft serve ice cream cones. <laughs> well, that is another point for Nathan. You know we make mistakes here too. If you notice something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at um actually show. We might even feature your tweet on our next episode. The Japanese publication Weekly Shonen Jump puts out comics primarily targeting 12 to 18 year olds and has been running for roughly 50 years. Many popular anime series started as serialized manga here, including Dragon Ball, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Bleach, Fist of the North Star, Strawberry 100%, One Piece, Bo 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 Bo, Berserk, and Naruto. Um, actually, that's Bo 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 Bo. Bo. <laughs> I almost certainly mispronounced it, but I don't think you got the correct pronunciation <laughs> either. Let's see if I can do it. Bo, 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 bo. Bo. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> um, actually, Shonen Jump is popular amongst a wider demographic between <laughs> yeah. 12 to 18. But, but. also, <laughs> um, shoot, I'm trying to think of which is the one that doesn't exist in those, and I'm, I'm going to guess Berserk is not a Shonen Jump publication, but I'm just guessing. Well, you guessed correct. Wow. Hey! Uh, and here's why. Because if you go to Tokyo, where I used to live, <laughs> oh, you and you can to the Kappa Bridge. I was, I was like, wow, you took like a lot of time on your Tokyo vacation to understand this Kappa thing. Uh, but then, yeah, wow. I lived there for we a bit. We don't have time to go to Kyoto. I need to give more cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to make my, my, my gift. Um, but there's a store, and I was just thinking, what can you buy? What's the merch you can buy? 
You can buy Dragon Ball stuff. You can buy One Piece. They got Naruto. Don't know that one. Definitely JoJo's. Bo 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 bo. And it's like should watch that one. Strawberry makes sense. So I yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Berserk is uh, much more violent uh, and uh, and graphic than any of the other uh, other titles uh, here. Uh, so yeah, it does not belong. Just for the record, it's bo 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 bo. Bo 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 Wait, sorry. Say it again. Bo 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 Correct. All right, I'll get it. I'll get it. We do it again. Bo 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 bo. He fights using his nose hair. That's what I said. What? Sorry. He fights using his nose hair. Is that true? Yeah. He really does. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a good show. But why didn't you tell me how to say it? You seem to know what you're talking about. Because I I would get it wrong still. I just heard it, and if I say it again, I'll get it wrong. Yeah. Bo 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 bo. Yeah. All right, I got it. Now it's in there. That's what I said. That's what I said. On to our next. Question. Boy, there sure are a lot of superhero movies these days, says the most boring person in the world. Yet in spite of all the roles available, there's still been multiple actors who have played two different superheroes, including Nicolas Cage, Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, and Ben Affleck. Nathan. Uh, um, actually, Hugh Jackman's only been Wolverine. Hugh Jackman's only been Wolverine. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I saw you. Both. This happened last time too. This the, the, the number of times you gotta the, the, those, I know, those button I gotta reflexes. Be on it. Listen. Uh, yeah, I've, you've known a bunch of these. It's just been the the, the <sighs> This is rough. Who is but, Nicolas Cage besides Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider. Nicolas Cage Oops. was also a big da- uh, big, right. da- big Daddy in uh, in Kick Ass. Yeah. Is it Big Daddy? Is that is that his name? Yeah, Big Daddy. I think it's big Daddy. Big Daddy. Yeah, it's big Daddy. Yeah. Um, also, Gosh, darn it. he would have been Superman. It would have been Superman. he did the tests. Well, there so you go. I count it. Ah, and the crisis yeah, yeah. of infinite ah, Superman. Ah, I'm so bummed. I think uh, that story about the Jurassic Park ride wins thank you. overall, yeah. though. Thank you. That's so you know funny. What? I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, this brings us to our last shiny question of the game. This game is called Match the Voice. Uh, on your board, once you flip it over, you're gonna see six cartoon characters and six names along the side. It'll be up to you to match the uh, voice actor who voiced these particular characters. I might get this wrong for kicks, actors I've hired. <laughs> <laughs> cool, let's go ahead and flip these over. Let's take a look at who we've got. is a toughie for me, but I'm done. Done, Kirk is done. Nathan, how are you looking over there? I I, I think I know for sure two of them, yeah. and <laughs> everything else is, is just a guess. Yeah, pretty much me too. I like the clickbait thumbnail we've got for the the dog. Yeah. Or the... We had homers. to make it clear that we're not talking not, about Homer not here. Not talking about Homer. <laughs> Flea! Homer's, Homer's voiced by Flea, <laughs> as we all know. As we all know, as always been. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Homer um, is, continues to be voiced by the late, great Jerry Orbach. Yeah. Uh, is everyone uh, everyone locked in? Everyone have their, it looks like uh, Kirk and Haley are done. Nathan, you, you feel, is that sh- Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, good? Let's Great. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. All right, yeah. uh, let's take a look. Nathan, show us what you got. Walk us through here. What did you say? What, what okay, did you say you got so here? Okay, so I'm uh, pretty sure Flea and Lily Tomlin are correct. Mm-hmm. I don't think Johnny Cash voiced any of the bottom ones. So mm-hmm. I just went, you know, that's Simpsons like getting celebrities on yeah. there for for like one shot. Like all all he says is find your soulmate, yeah. right, or something like that. And then he, he uh, has a lot. He says a little more than, but yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. He sings Walk the Line. Yeah, <laughs> he sings yeah. the entire. Yeah, he does his entire yeah. best of, uh, and then. Yeah, the the bottom ones, I don't know, Captain Planet and Reading Rainbow, I feel like fall into the same sort of like headspace of uh, where where I was right. in the 90s, so LeVar Burton made sense for that, and then the other two I really didn't know. Just, just to guess. Uh, you, you said the late Jerry Orbach, and I was like, okay, well I think SpongeBob is more recent <laughs> than uh, Beauty and the Beast, so I switched them. What you're looking at there, uh, you actually have all six correct wow. there. So let's let's take a look. Let's see how everyone else did. Do I then? Uh, oh yeah, I do. As I, do I. As everyone, everyone has all oh, six great. of the these. Oh great! The one I got, everybody <laughs> else gets right. Really? Everyone's keeping pace. Everyone run along. And and Nathan would have gotten that wrong. He would have had those switched around, uh, uh, but for the the Jerry Orbach comment. I know. Oh, great. That's a point for all of you. One point for all of you. Oh. Um, so it's basically worthless. I, I, uh, <laughs> no, not to all of them. No, you can, you, you can know? go, you can take it to the bank, you deposit that there point, you, you get a little interest. There you go. 
This brings us to our final question We're of the 15 game. Points. <laughs> 15 points. Nathan has seven, Haley has one, and Kirk has five points. Uh, so it's pretty much a decided <laughs> game, but we can still close it up. And beyond that, the last question, as always, concerns real life skills. So if you answer this one, you can at least have the joy of knowing that you know something that's maybe a little more valuable than how many Bo Coblin teeth it takes to buy uh, a glowing uh, skeleton suit. So here we go, real life skills. When painting a wall with latex paint, it's recommended that you first dip your brush in water, then dip it fully into the paint. Hold it at a 45 degree angle and paint in long, even strokes. Um, actually, you shouldn't do long, even strokes, but it's more of a X type <laughs> shape, uh, if I recall from my stagecraft. Yeah, yeah. Just, a, just a jagged. Uh, you just flick it. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, so, sometimes they'll say, like, do like a W stroke for painting a wall or something, but no, long, even strokes mm. is, what's, is what's recommended for painting a wall. Um, actually, <laughs> it would never tell you to dip the brush fully in. It's a, you dip it halfway in. It will get too much paint and it will streak everywhere and drip all over. That's correct. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> or stay in the Camera, what up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you only want to dip it like a third to a half uh, way yeah, up the brush. Yeah, otherwise it's too much. Too much. You idiot. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad that was worth 20 points. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, that is uh, that is a point for Haley. Uh, going to the second point on there, and perhaps the most important uh, yeah. point in the game. That's right. Last time I got this real life one too. Yeah. Um, well, that brings our final score to seven for Nathan, two for Haley, five for Kirk. Nathan is our winner this episode. All Congratulations. Numbers. Okay, just putting it back. <laughs> so in a way, we were we'll all doing that yeah. episode. <laughs> in a way, we all won if they're and all prime numbers. That's yes. right. We are, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're indivisible. We actually, no, no one's allowed to leave until we finish on a score right away. That's a prime now. Well, that is it for our show. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Oh.